So hi everyone, uh, it's uh, great to be here. And yeah, uh, so I will be talking about the new web UI we want to deliver for Fedora Workstation right now. And um, yeah, I will also talk about what, what is there right now and what uh, we are like changing for the future, what we have a future plan with it, just the near term future right now so a bit about me uh you see two two names there uh one is martin coleman martin coleman and second is me Jirka konečny, Jiri konečny. and uh martin is unfortunately not available uh he created most of these slides here the, for open out conference but the great thing the topic is the same so but unfortunately he's not available so i will present it completely and if you are, if you want to go for open adult conference, feel free to join and we'll be there too. So big credits to him. Uh, about me, I'm working in the Anaconda uh, team uh, in Red Hat for, I don't know, seven years, uh, maybe a bit more uh, right now. And like in the past, I was working as the developer, then as the team lead right now, I'm working, I'm focusing mostly about the PO, uh, product owner stuff. So I'm switching roles a bit. Well, it's seven years, so a uh, lot of time for trying new things. It's a new things. Uh, so, but I'm still familiar with what, what is happening there. Uh, so about, uh, what is it about? So first thing, we already get the change, uh, get these changes, the web UI, new web UI, for Fedora 39 before release, before the uh, before the beta freeze, and basically a bit after the beta freeze, then we find out that it's not quite ready. So we decided, uh, with like Fesco decided, but yeah, we agreed uh, that uh, let's postpone it and uh, finish all the tasks instead of like um, having all the uh, all the fixing on the on the last uh, last minute, etc. So it's right now in Fedora works, uh, Rohite workstation. We are targeting with the new web, new UI only Fedora workstation live media. Anything else? The reason is go slowly, get the feedback, and uh, make it stable before like switching it everywhere. So um, as you can see, 21st August 2023, and even like. Uh, Martin was able to find a second, so I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Uh, <laughs> uh, we we deployed it and it's there. Feel free to use it. Uh, so, what is it about? We are replacing the current GTK UI, uh, GTK free UI, uh, which is there since 2013, by the new web experience, web UI. It's built on the on the Patternfly framework with uh, the based on the cockpit. If you don't know cockpit, uh, it's uh, for the remote. It's it's tool in the uh, in, sorry, in Fedora for remote management of your uh, of your system. And we are using a lot of the a lot from them. We are using their CI. We are using their libraries, and it's really helping us a lot. And another, uh, you can see it also with the Agama uh, installer, uh, which is uh, which is for open uh, new new installer for the um, open source, and they are using the same technologies as we do. Uh, so yeah, we are not the all, uh, alone who's doing this change. And uh, so it's basically. It's not just the toolkit swap. It's not just about like switching to pattern fly and the and the cockpit framework. What we are looking here for is the major redesign. The reason for that is mainly we have a like quite amount of feedback about Anaconda is too complex, Anaconda is hard to use, hard to understand. And uh, one of the benefits of switching the frameworks is definitely like it's easier to test, easier to uh, like development is there much, much higher, et cetera, at support. But also we get this as an opportunity to make it, to make change on how it's used and to try to first modernize it, 
to the current standards. Second, get it easy to understand and simple to use. These are the main goals we have. So we switched from hub and spoke to the wizard model, uh, which is kind of fine because Agama did the opposite. They switched from the wizard to hub and spoke. So we somehow switched, swap, swap the space, swap the place. But uh, yeah, we basically found out that the hub and spoke is one of the critics of, uh, of what we have right now, that it's hard to understand in a level like the done button is in the top left top left uh, corner uh, and similar things like it's not that mm, not that really mm, understandable easy to understand because you are you have a hub and you are getting to spokes and then returning back to the spokes uh, from the spokes to hub and you can configure what you just what you need there's definitely a benefit like with the wizard you need to go next 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 and through the, all the screens with the with the hub and spoke you can get back for the future, if there will be complaints about like I have to go through all the screens, we can do we can uh, we are thinking about like implementing. You can skip something. You can just like from the left menu, we skip some steps and get for with the defaults there. But that's not implemented and not in not something we are working on right now. We will we want to implement it based on feedback. We will see because like doing next next thing is not that hard right now definitely. Next thing, help. Right now, with the current solution, we have help button in the Anaconda. Where the good, you can click and it will show you the screen with information about what you what you can do in the current uh, current like screen spoke. What you what you see with the current window. We change that because, like honestly, who wants to read this? And also, they are quite deprecated, uh, like outdated not the packet outdated right now with the with the federal because uh, it's hard to get it up to date uh in general so we decided to keep this integrated into the environment and having it uh like built in solution in way of every option should be explained by the ui and be self descriptionally and if not there have to be a way uh, you can click on the option and get just the text and information about the current option and, and the given option not about like everything you see and you have to go through the text and try to find it so another benefit of this we decided to keep uh, the documentation upstream in the code so it should be easily accessible by the local uh, by the localization team so it could get into multiple languages which is not the case uh, as i'm aware of uh, right now and we completely revamped the storage configuration i will talk about it uh, later uh so yeah uh the overall installation as i said like, the goal here is to simplify and make it easy to use um we are trying to get out, out of the complexities and if they are required they should be ideally somehow like hidden in the advanced configuration or something so a user who is not aware of uh like i fully understand what what uh, uh the installer needs from me or how the partitioning works or whatever whatever uh it should not make it hard for the user. That's the goal here. That's the ultimate goal, I would say. So uh, how does it work? I already talked about it a bit. So about in general, like to get it a bit in more details, let's say this way. So the Anaconda Web UI is a, is a JavaScript application which is uh, running on cockpit framework and co cockpit uh, is taking care of showing it like there's a web, web server um, showing it and uh, firefox has you know, the screen as the application and this javascript application is communicating with our backend which we prepared for long years uh back uh backward like we are using that even now for the current uh, current solution for the current Fedora. It's not new. It's there for a long time. It's still improved. Still, like we are quite near to finish, but we have still still find some some fine tuning we needed, and incrementally it was added through the time. And the benefit of that, you can if you want, you can definitely like create your own UI and use it at the backend. Just today, I was uh, notified by uh, by Neil. Uh, that uh, that someone is trying to use the backend for their solution. 
So it's great. It seems like someone is uh, looking for that. One. I'm super happy about it. Um, yeah, so, so as I said, the web UI is work is uh, communicating with the backend by the we are using DBS for that and uh, basically reacting on what the backend says. And the backend is doing heavy lifting, which means that we can have the stable backend and like quickly change the uh, UI, which is one of the points of separating it. Uh, for the local installation, uh, if you if you run the live media, there will be a Firefox with window which should show which will show you as the local application. It shouldn't be visible that it's browser, but still it has a benefit of the browser. I will talk about it later. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't have the feeling you are working with the web application as the Electron apps, similar to Electron apps. It's not Electron apps. Um, and also one important thing, we changed the workflow a lot on level of uh, GNOME initial setup is part of it. The reason for that is mainly we went to the Federal Hour Station Special Interest Group and said, uh, told them that we would like to uh, use your uh, deliverable as the web UI for Federal 39. And they told us, okay, that's great. And we have a plan to use GNOME initial setup for, for live media. Uh, so let's compare, let's combine it and uh, put it together. So they went with the GNOME initial setup as the first part of the live media, uh, which will configure language and screen, a keyboard for you. And then you can start the installation or not, uh, or get to the live media. And as, I was, as it was said before, we redesigned the storage. And one of the redesigns, like redesign, is uh, using Blivet Bliv GUI uh, application, which is existing application. You can install it on your system, start it. It's similar to Gparted, and we are basically integrating it to the workflow to to, to the Anaconda. Uh, so you can do uh, your partitioning if you really if you need it uh, to do it precisely as you want then you can use the Blivet GUI for this. Um, so I will go through the screens right now to show you what's there. It will be screenshots because uh, honestly, I don't think we have a time for demo and I don't like demos, uh, live demos so uh, much because eh, there's something went wrong a lot. And also it's heavily developed right now. So first language screen. This is the GNOME initial setup. It's what you will do, what you will get with the Federal 39 if you install Federal War Station after the boot, uh, first boot, you will get this screen, which is basically allowing you to select the language and select the keyboard. These values are also on the live media from Federal 40, and these will set your life environment, but also this will allow you to start installation in the session of the GNOME initial setup. So we are basically using what you will set in the system by the GNOME initial setup. It seems like simplification. And also we are combining the approaches of they wanted to have a localized live media, which is hard to do without uh, something like this. So we are having like uh, two, two, two flies by one shot. Then there's installation method. This is most complex screen. We like the installer is really simple because of the GNOME initial setup because of everything. Right now it's really simple. This is the most problematic screen and it's one of the most problematic screen in uh, the current Anaconda, current UI. Um, not problematic, but like complex, let's say this way. Um, so what you can do here, as you can see, you can select the disks for the installation. And the important part here, there are two important parts. First, uh, you, you see the guided partitioning, as we call it, which is a like extension of the automatic partitioning we had before, let's say this way. So you have a path you can take for installing your system. Right now, we support erase everything and install it over everything I have in, this, in the disks. Or use free space. I prepared the and I prepared the space for you beforehand. Or you can use a mount point assignment, and I will be talking about that a little bit later. For mount point assignment and for free space, you have also possibility to click on the modify storage button as you as you see there. 
And also one important thing, uh, this is selecting you a path, but then you can customize it in a level of, right now there's encryption possibility. I don't have a slide for that, but it's like write your password, not 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 anything anything uh, super uh, complex but we would like to extend it and uh promote the guided partitioning as the first uh, first class like like the priority uh and uh recommended solution for the installation the modify storage button and the custom is like fine tuning the storage yourself it should be there just for people who really really want to work with that but the recommendation should be use the par guided partitioning because it's giving you recommendation of the system, recommendation of the of what you are deploying. And that's the goal here, really. So the Blivet GUI looks like this. And it's kind of temporary, uh, but I will talk about it. It's similar to Gpartit. You will create a storage, and then after you will end it, you will get uh, like and with it, you will basically get to this screen, which will allow you to assign what you created to, to the partitions. This will be a bit changed, but in general, you can go here even without modific modifying the storage and just reinstall your existing system, which I see as a big benefit. Like I have already installed, I don't know, OpenSUSE. I want to try Fedora. I want to use the same partitioning guys have uh, I had before. So I will go here and just like, use this partition as my boot, use this partition as root, or add a new one. Um, it's simple solution, it works, so uh, why not? And also, it will allow you, if you really want, you can create the partitioning yourself for, your, for yourself beforehand and just assign it here if you don't like the tools we, are, we, are, we have. So we don't force you to use uh, storage partitioning by Anaconda or what we give you. You can do it be be beforehand or in live media and then start the install. Everything is possible here. So then you will get to the review screen. The review screen, uh, simple review the installation. We would like to improve it uh, over what we had before and really give you all uh, overall picture of what will be delivered to the installed system and even improve. They are even like thinking and ideas about improving it on level of like you will be able to click on the link there and it will get you to the core to the custom customization uh, for the given thing you don't like or something that's something which will be maybe added in the future that's definitely not a plan right now and then as you would expect installation because you confirmed that you want to install so we changed it we we switch it from the overall progress bar to steps which describes what they are doing right now main reason for that overall progress bar is lying you we are not able not at all able to tell you what will be the current progress because we don't know how much how much time the future task will take that's not known to in to to the installer so instead, we will provide you information about what is the current step we are doing. And we can provide you, for example, if we know the like uh, it's 20% or 24% or whatever, we can provide you the information by the text there, installing 20% completed or uh, 500 of 1,000 packages are installed or something like that. We can do that. But we won't lie you in long one progress bar, which is completely wrong. And as you can see, we are decided we are dividing it, uh, dividing the installation to several steps. These can vary based on the type of the installation, but in general, it should look like this um, with the modifications. And then you have an installation complete. You can quickly start, and that's it. That's basically it for the screen. So a uh, few minor improvements we have. Uh, one. It's not really improvement, but basically you can start it from live too. So it's not just the GNOME initial setup, but you can go to the live, as I said, create your, prepare your partitioning or anything, or change the keyboard configuration to what you want, and then start the installer. The installer will work with what is in the system and will install a language and keyboard specifically from the system to the installed system. Uh, you also are able to report the issues as we had before. Unfortunately, before it was more problematic because you basically had a screen of uh, you have to uh, you have to type there. I think it's now even requiring the 
uh, token. But uh, if not, that's just because of us. Uh, they want to have it for Bugzilla. So instead, we switched it for the like. Here's the information about what what's the what is what is happening, and then you can click on the link, and the link will get you to uh, the link will get you to Bugzilla with predefined information, and you can just like log in through the browser, work with in the browser as you are used to. Uh, it's simple solution. Super helpful, and there's a great guide for creation for filing bugs for Fedora. So we are using basically this site for uh, filing it there. Simple, easy, working. That's great uh, for everyone. And then finally, Anaconda has an about screen. Uh, nothing much, like nothing super super shiny or anything, but yeah, we have it. And yeah, ideally we will improve it with our logo or something, but at least you know the version finally from the UI, which wasn't really easy before. <laughs> and the benefit of having Firefox, you can, if you know the correct keys, you can open the debug console, which is benefit for like, okay, I found, I have an issue with the, with the UI, it behaves incorrectly, and I understand JavaScript, so I will do contribution. Yeah, thank you, that would be great. Uh, the future. Yeah, and one point to this, it's super hard to debug issues with the GTK UI on the installation media, just, just for information. This is one of the big benefits of uh, the JavaScript. For future. So what we want to focus on? Stabilization. That's one top priority for us. Uh, make it stable, finish file, uh, fix all the bugs we found, um, improve the user experience, not really focusing so much on the on what we like adding new features or something like that. There are some, but mostly not. Like I, I will I will talk about it. So finishing the Fedora workstation. We are not targeting for Fedora 40. We are not targeting any other than Fedora workstation. This is our goal for the web UI. And one of the minor features we want to add at the end uh, is a uh, easy way to provide the feedback right now it will be probably uh, solved in the like finished installation and there will be a link which will guide you to a place where you can like give us a feedback and we will follow it uh, that's id that's currently the plan but it's not yet implemented so it might change slightly but yeah uh, make it accessible and easily e easy for for everyone uh, to um provide us feedback. That's the main goal here in general. So uh, also big change, cockpit storage. Uh, sorry, uh, I haven't, uh, do I understand it correctly that I have some problems? Anyway, like I will continue, sorry. Uh, so the cockpit, yeah, great. Thank you, Neil. Uh, so the cockpit storage. Uh, we want to change the Blivet GUI experience with the cockpit storage. As I said, cockpit is the remote management tool. They already have the cockpit storage, which is a way of like you can get remotely on your system and enable like show show the module for cockpit storage in the cockpit and change your storage there. I don't know, change mount points, create new create new partition, whatever. What do you need? Uh, so we went to the cockpit, or it was honestly like mutual for mutual for both sides. With the cockpit team, we decided to go with the cockpit storage. And right now they are working on the redesign. So I have some screenshots here, but it's about the or like current with the Federal 39, the current cockpit storage uh, version. They it will change, so please keep it in mind. And right now it's in heavy development, uh, heavy, heavy, uh, yeah, heavy development. So uh, one of the benefits for that future improvement, uh, future improvement for the remote installations. Basically, Blivet GUI won't be available for the remote installation. The GTK app, it's very hard to get GTK app through the web browser somewhere. Uh, there are some toolings, but they mostly not working correctly. So this is. HTTP solution uh, core origin uh, like right now, and it has a lot of capabilities. So we don't have to write everything ourselves, and we can share the solution. It should 
like be, create better maintenance for everyone and better easy easy way to improve for new to get new features there. So it's not creating something what is what is already there. Ah, uh, yeah. So one of the benefits or change for the cockpit storage will be uh, anaconda mode. Uh, they called it this way, but it basically means that there's mode which will in anaconda hide some stuff which is not really usable for for the installation of the system, and it will also allow us to somehow extend it in a level of like uh, if you create the mount points or set the mount points in the cockpit storage, this will be reflected in the anaconda. You don't have to assign that as it is with the blivet query. And we are also have uh, will be uh, have will have the ability to guide the user through the through the partitioning experience in level of uh, there will be possibility to click uh, to, to uh, show to tell you what you need and also it ideally put there something like a button or some reaction i'm not sure exactly like how it will be implemented to check the storage by the anaconda if the current storage configuration is correct also, still as the with the Bivet GUI, and this is the big uh, disclaimer. Both solutions, Bivet GUI and Cockpit Storage, has uh, they are doing the changes to our storage immediately. We are not able to uh, use the planning of the storage as we had before. But honestly, I think the this drawback is not that big as the benefits we uh, like everyone has from it. And uh, yeah. I think this will be like a okay, uh, good user experience, even with it. We definitely will make big red, big visible, not red, I'm not sure about it, <laughs> big visible letters uh, by, by letters that, so you, what do you do it now? You are, uh, it's impacting your system. It's not in level of like uh, the installation is happening at the end and the partitioning is happening also at the end. It will happen immediately. So I just want to show you what's the current state of the cockpit storage. That's not what you see, what you will what will you see. So just to give you an overview of what's the how the cockpit storage really like. What is it? So as I said, it's right now it's in the browser. Just the just the screenshot from cockpit uh, where you can see the storage. There's mount point. You can select the. You can create new new uh, partition. Select the mount point. Name it, etc. There is a lot, and basically, yeah, we are getting all of this. And this is the screenshot from Mario's uh, from YouTube video from Mario's Warmer. Feel free to click on like look on the YouTube video. Uh, I'm not sure if the oh whatever. So uh, this is the first attempt. Like first attempt, we are with else right now, and Marius Volman is the one, the guy who's working on that, and he's super great. And he was able to create this like I don't know two weeks after we decided that the cockpit storage will be used in Anaconda, and he was able to uh, create the partitioning in the in the cockpit cockpit storage, and put the mount points already to the Anaconda. So I was surprised that he was able to make it that fast and working. And right now he's working a lot on redesign and one of the features uh, which is missing and which is requirement is ButterFS support for cockpit storage. They are adding that too. So yes, uh, they are working on that right now hard and it should be part of the Fedora 40 uh, experience. That's the plan right now. So after Fedora 40, just quickly, uh, one thing we want to, like, as I said, focus stabilization feedback. Feedback is the most important. Please provide us the feedback if you like it, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, why? Uh, we will try to uh, work on the design. And this is something we can definitely like change bench based on your feedback. We will find out that this not, doesn't work and we will change it. Um, the future steps for uh, the development might be Fedora for Fedora server. It gives sense to like go a bit a uh, step ahead and uh, go with like remote storage such as uh, requirements, etc. But it's definitely not Fedora 40 and probably not even Fedora 41. At least I don't expect that. Uh, so yeah, uh, we will see based on the feature features feedback stabilization how it will event and based on that we will decide what will be the next step really. This is probably a candidate. So the main output of the presentation, 
If you have time, you want to give us feedback, please download it, try it. It's Federal Voice Station, Federal Voice Station right now. Give us feedback. What do you like? What do you don't like? As I said, Blivet GUI will go away and will be replaced with by cockpit storage. So it's uh, you can give us a feedback on that, like what works, what not, but it will be replaced. So it's kind of different. Uh, it will be kind of different and it's uh, a bit problematic there. So questions, and I see there are some. Uh, do we have an idea of what the package package selection is going to look like for more complex scenarios obviously after a federal version in Federal 40? Yeah, definitely uh, federal version don't have it, and we don't have yet mockups for that or for the software selection. Uh, so it's hard to say, but I honestly think it will be a bit similar to what we have right now. We are not, if you are asking if the separate packages could be selected, then no, we are not uh, really thrilled about that because it caused us a lot of issues in the past. And that was the reason why we removed it and moved to environments and groups. So yeah, it's not yet, uh, not yet decided. I see the answer. I'm not sure uh, what it means, but basically, <laughs> I will move to next no, non-answer. So, what about battery FS support in cockpit storage? Uh, yeah, cockpit storage will get battery FS support. It's one of the requirements we gave him. We gave them. So, uh, yes, it will be there. And how uh, will Anaconda add-on work with this new UI? Yeah. So, from start, we don't support uh, add-ons. One of the reasons is uh, we don't have, like there are no really add-ons for the live media right now. For the future, it depends on, uh, it depends on how this will be requested and uh, how much it will be utilized uh, based on the feedback, basically. I, I would like to avoid implementing uh, something or in general, like team, team don't have to implement something which is not requested. So we will see based on the current situation if there will be feedback for like hey, we need to, we need to have the add-ons here, and that's one of the reasons why we are moving like rather slowly than replacing everything uh, by hot meal, um, hot meal so so uh, yeah uh, we'd like to go slowly and um, get the feedback. Okay. All the others are answered. I'm not sure uh, who answered them. Oh, it's previous. It's probably from the previous uh, previous um, presentation, I guess. Okay. So, any other questions? If not, I can probably I can probably close this. Okay, so that's it from my from my side. Thank you a lot, everyone. And yeah, feel free to contact me. We are on Fedora uh, Fedora Matrix Matrix Room, so um, we are happy to uh, happy to talk about it.